is um, nested cross validation. So if you've done any sort of um, machine learning in the past, then you will probably um, have come across the whole paradigm of um, training set, validation set, and test set, where um, in order to get an idea of how your model will perform on future unseen data, it's extremely important that you don't uh, evaluate its performance on the data that you used to train it in the first place, because models will almost always perform better on um, the data that you used to train them than on um, new data. And so um, commonly what people will do is that they will split their data into a portion um, that they'll call the training set. And these will be perhaps randomly um, selected rows um, that the algorithm has access to during training. And they'll train a model on the training set. And then they'll take that model and they'll evaluate it on um, another partition of the data um, called the test set. And the test set arose from the data um, that the algorithm did not see during the model training process. In a supervised machine learning setting, they will get the model to make predictions on the test set and we'll compare those predictions with the ground truth and we'll report um, some kind of metric that helps us evaluate how well the model has performed. Um, one of the simplest for classification uh, being the accuracy of, of the model. What proportion of cases did the model correctly classify, for example? And sometimes what people will also do is they will have a, a third set or partition of, of, of their data set that they will call the validation set. And what they will do is they will train their uh, model using the training set, um, perhaps using um, one combination of hyperparameters um, or some kind of um, settings or, or options um, for, for their model training process. They'll train that model in their training set um, and then they'll ev evaluate it on the validation set. And then they'll tweak and they'll change those hyperparameters um, and train a model using the training set and then evaluate it on the validation set. And keep doing that, training on the training set and evaluating on the validation set until they feel that they have a combination of hyperparameters that they think works the best, gives the best um, performance um, on the, valid the validation set. And then once they have that, they will then evaluate their model on the test set, um, which has not been seen by the algorithm at any point during this um, model training and, and tuning process. Um, and they will use that then as a, um, a sort of final metric for how they believe that their model will um, uh, perform on, on new data. And if you've got um, a, a, an algorithm that is uh, computationally intensive, or if you've got a situation where you have a very large data set, um, and so the uh, performance metrics that, that you get back are actually quite r robust and don't change um, from um, from time to time. Um, then actually the this this paradigm of training set, validation set, test set um, is very robust um, and, and it works well um, and many people do it. Uh, but if you have the computational budget and or if your um, the number of cases that you have is quite small, um, then I prefer to use uh, nested uh, cross-validation instead. Um, and so let, let me just go through it and explain in um, a little bit of, of, of detail. So hopefully it'll um, make more sense. So um, in this example today, um, what we're going to do is take our, our data set and split it into three folds, okay? Just like um, k-fold um, cross-validation. And we're going to reserve one fold as our test set. And the other two folds, we're going to further split into a training set and a test set. Okay, so we've got this kind of outer partition uh, where we have a three fold, um, and we have this inner partition using just the training set, uh, which is actually just simple holdout cross validation. Okay, where we have one portion as the training set and one portion as the test set. Um, and then using this data, we're going to, using our, our random search procedure, we're going to randomly select a combination of hyperparameters from the search space that we defined, and we're going to train a model using that combination. Um, and then we're going to evaluate that model on this test set. Then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to randomly select another combination of hyperparameters, train a model on the training set, evaluate it on the test set. And then we're going to keep doing that all the way for our 20 iterations that we, we defined. We were going to only do uh, 20 iterations of our random search. Um, and then at the end of this, we've got 20 models all trained um, and evaluated 
uh, with 20 different combinations of hyperparameters. And we're going to take the model that gave us the best performance on, on its, its test set, and we're going to pass that uh, winning combination of hyperparameters um, up to the outer loop. So this is the inner loop, and this here is the outer loop. We're going to train a model using this training set, using the, that winning combination of hyperparameters, and then we're going to evaluate it on uh, the outer test set. And then we're going to do that whole procedure twice more, where this time we're going to use um, this uh, middle fold as the test set, and we're going to derive our um, inner loop using um, this block and this block. Okay, And then again, randomly select hyperparameter, train a model on the training set, evaluate it on the test set, and do that for all 20 um, iterations, pass the best hyperparameter combination up to the outer set, and then we'll train a model using those hyperparameters using the, uh, the, the two training set folds and evaluate it on the test set fold. And then we do that again finally, where now um, this fold is reserved as the outer um, test set. And so what we end up with is instead of just one measure of model performance on one test set, uh, we have three measures. Okay. And then what we what people will usually do then is take the the aggregate or the mean um, performance measure um, across those models, and this has a couple of advantages over the simple training validation um, test set paradigm. One of them is that we're not just relying on um, a single test set um, for for our um, evaluations, because of course it could be that um, by sheer chance, especially if your data set is small, that you picked a partition of training and test set um, that um, meant that the test sample um, was quite easy for the model to, to classify. Whereas in this case, we're using um, all of the data as, as the test set um, at least once. The other uh, advantage is that um, although we're not doing it in, in this example, because we just have simple holdout as our inner loop, um, but if you did something more sophisticated as your inner loop, um, say for example, we did we also did threefold cross validation um, on the inner loop, um, it actually means that you have a, a moving validation set, so that you're, you're not just um, reusing the same validation set over and over and over again, because of course you you can end up overfitting to your validation set. Um, although we're not doing that um, today. Um, of course, the one big downside of this is that you end up actually having to train your model um, uh, three times more um, than um, if, if we just did a simple um, training, validation and test set. So that might seem relatively complicated, um, and, and in a way it is, um, but thankfully NLR makes this uh, very simple and very easy um, for us to uh, define.